Today we're going to be talking about what makes a good TIG welding machine. All right, I do job shop kind of work where I weld all different materials and all different thicknesses, so here's what I need out of a welding machine. I need an AC-DC machine. I need to be able to weld all kinds of materials, and I need it to have a really good low end, a real light start, and I need it to have balls for the thick stuff. That's really about it. I mean, uh, all the rest of the stuff, of course I need high frequency start so I don't have to scratch off, but all the rest of the stuff is gravy. Those are the really things, the real basic things that I, that I need out of a welding machine. And so uh, today we're going to test out the bottom end and, uh, and figure out some settings for some really thin aluminum. And uh, we figure if, uh, if we can weld the bottom of a Coke can, then our machine has the ability to light up light enough that we're not going to blow holes in hardly anything. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to weld some beads on the bottom of Coke cans. One, uh, we're going to run some using a Dynasty 200DX and uh, figure out some optimal settings, and some pulse settings. And then we're going to run some beads using an Everlast PowerTig 250EX and uh, see how the knobs on here correlate with the digital touchpad on the uh, Miller Dynasty 200 DX, so we ought to at least learn something, huh? Uh, Christmas is right around the corner, and so I would like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Let's take care of our families, and uh, listen, I know people, not everybody celebrates Christmas, and people are watching this video, these videos from all over the globe. Don't get offended if I say Merry Christmas. I celebrate Christmas. If you celebrate Hanukkah and you wish me a Happy Hanukkah, I won't get offended. I will just take it like you're wishing me and my family well. So. I wish you and your family well. Merry Christmas. Uh, let's have a good, safe 2011. Take care of your families. Let's work hard. Right, for welding Coke cans, you don't have to worry about penetration. You will penetrate. In fact, that can be a problem drawing that backside crap into the weld. So we're going to try some settings here that uh, kind of uh, keep heat from building up and kind of limit penetration a little bit. So we're going to be on AC, of course, for welding aluminum and uh, TIG high frequency uh, and also remote standard and I'm gonna set pulse settings 60 pulses a second 30 percent uh, on time as far as the peak side of the pulse and a 20 percent background current and that's gonna give me a little bounce between the peak and the background enough that it's gonna keep the heat from building up 60 pulses a second just because I futzed around a little bit and that seemed to focus the arc pretty good without making it too stiff and it worked so uh, uh, the other couple things that are going to really make a difference are balance and AC frequency. So set the balance on roughly 60, that's 60% DCEN, and uh, the AC frequency on about 90, and uh, that, uh, that seemed to work pretty well. Remember in previous videos I said you can set it at AC frequency at about 100 to 120 and weld most anything. And it, it, that would have worked on here too, but 90 seemed to work a little bit better. So this is the Dynasty. Uh, it's able to light up on this uh, thin aluminum without blowing a hole. It's got a good sure start. Um, at low amperage like this, I'm only I'm only putting out about 11 or 12 amps. Uh, you know, sometimes the arc just kind of flares up and gets funky at, at low amperage like that. But overall, overall pretty good. You gotta feed wire in pretty often on on uh, thin stuff like this, or you'll wind up just sinking. You can see every now and then it just sunk right through and penetrated. So that was the Dynasty. Now to get similar settings, I discovered I was only putting out about 11 or 12 amps, so I turned it down at main amperage a little bit. AC frequency is going to set it over to about three o'clock, which equates to roughly the 90 that I or 100 that I was set at. And uh, you know I do have the pulser on. The pulse frequency, you know, set uh, to about the one o'clock position, and both the pulse amps and pulse time on set around the ten o'clock position seem to equate to the digital settings on the uh, on the Dynasty. Preflow is important. If you don't have gas flowing when you hit that thin stuff, you will crap it up and you will blow a hole. So again, I set uh, main amperage. Uh, see that lit up? Sounded kind of harsh, but it didn't even nip. It didn't even nip that thin metal. So this has got a capability of a low start uh, as well. So now I'm, I'm trying to just pile up the, and, and uh, run a cold bead, just barely enough amperage to, to flow the metal along. To try to keep that rod uh, fed in the puddle, keep the puddle satisfied with, with rod so it won't draw too much base metal and penetrate too much. 
So that's what we wind up with. So you know, here you got the uh, here you got the Everlast Power TIG. Here you got the Miller Dynasty 200DX Power TIG 250EX Dynasty 200DX. So not like night and day, but uh, you know they're both they are a little different, a little different. And uh, so that's that for today. Thanks for watching. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.